Government of Odisha and Electronic and IT Department, OCAC presents Odisha Sparks Conclave in association with CNBC TV 18, co-presented by OMC. Odisha, known for its rich heritage and diverse attractions, has achieved transformational growth in its economic development. CNBC TV 18, in association with the government of Odisha, organized the Odisha Sparks Conclave 2023, a one-of-its-kind thought leadership forum to highlight the state's success story. The first edition of the forum brought together key government officials, senior business leaders and industry experts from the sectors of agriculture, IT, tourism, investment, startups to discuss and deliberate upon the path-breaking reforms to set new benchmarks for Odisha's development. The forum started off with a keynote address by Minister of Electronics and Information Technology, Sports and Youth Services, Tushar Kanti Behra, who set the context for the evening. The last two and a half decades have witnessed the rise of Odisha as a shining example of what can be achieved through strategic planning, effective governance and a resilient spirit. The achievements are truly impressive, from infrastructural development that has connected remotest villages to the mainstream, to advancements in healthcare, education, sports and technology, skill that have enhanced the quality of life for its citizens. The state's efforts in harnessing its natural resources while preserving its environment as well as its focus on empowering the women and underprivileged have earned Odisha a well-deserved reputation for being a trailblazer in holistic development. A special chief guest addressed by Minister of Industries, MSME and Energy, Pratap K. Shri Dev, was followed where he shared his views on the approach of the transformational development for Odisha. We came to power in 2000 after the super cyclone. We inherited empty, empty coffers. We didn't have money to pay to our bureaucracy. We are in heavy debt. Agriculture production was at its lowest. Starvation deaths were reported in the media. Honorable Chief Minister and his team started setting the house into order. Pehle paid, baad mein kapda, baad mein padhai. The first, the starvation issue was addressed. And simultaneously, we also started investing in human index. That is education and skill. And we started also pumping in money into infrastructure. So now all this put together, Cutting a long story short, it took us about a decade and a half. By 2014, we had achieved all our targets. A key highlight of the event was a special video message by the Honorable Chief Minister of Odisha, Sri Naveen Patnayak, who shared his words of encouragement on the changing face of Odisha. Odisha in recent years has made remarkable achievements across sectors like industry, investment, tourism, information technology, sports, education, healthcare, agriculture, and many more. From women empowerment to making endeavors to realize the silicon dreams of our youth, we are leaving no stone unturned in our strive to see the state leads among the states. We have made the fourth highest reduction in multidimensional poverty among states in the last five years. I'm glad that this conclave also brings in conversation around rural development in Odisha. The forum featured a series of interactive sessions by industry leaders, government officials and experts from diverse sectors who shared their vision to accelerate the state's steady growth towards a thriving future. The first panel discussion for the evening titled Odisha Network, Taking Giant Technological Leaps, dwelt upon the Odisha's IT and e-governance initiatives and their impact on delivering better services for its citizens. Let me start with you, Jayashree, you know, how is Orisa fast emerging as a, as a technology resource hub? What factors are working in its favor? 
So whatever applications, technological aspects being designed in the mm. state today, definitely you can see the entrepreneurial system here. They, have de they are developing with the stakeholders, with our OCAC and everything. And they are really making things possible that we are seeing that we are going to, we are very well poised to do the work from here. And we would be absolutely contributing to the IT system in a very, very big manner. Nilacha, let me come to you now. Uh, KPMG has been working with various states. Uh, first, tell us, you know, how do you view Odisha in terms of technological advancement? And what are the learnings that the state can take from the other states that you're working with? Let me, let me start by saying infrastructure was talked about. Infrastructure, there is a land parcels which are available for people to plug and play infrastructure to come here and develop it. Second, in terms of uh, the infrastructure, uh, the Honorable Minister talked about how ease of doing business has happened. How the in investors can actually come in and invest there and build up their infrastructure there and uh, invest uh, in India. And if you look at it in terms of the policy initiatives, already the Information Technology Policy 2022 has been launched. And this gives a lot of incentives for people to be there. Uh, you know, the government has been instrumental in creating path-breaking projects. If you can elaborate some of these projects, some of the use cases in the area of e-governance, healthcare and education. I, I cannot stop myself from talking about the health scheme because that's the sinusoid of all eyes yeah. currently. This is, the, this is the only one of a kind health scheme that is called Biju Swasthya Kalyan Yojana. In the short form, we call it BSKY, which is a near universalized health assurance scheme done nowhere in the world ever before. We uh, have seen a lot of health insurance schemes coming through the governments, whether it is USA, UK, or uh, for that matter, rest of the country, but no government completely assures health for them. So what we have done uh, under the leadership of Honorable CM is that we guarantee five lakh rupees each year for 88% of the population. That's 3.6 crore population out of 4.5 crore population are covered in that. 5 lakh per year health is guaranteed. And this 5 lakh ap may appear small to some, but I must tell you that this is not counted when they visit a government medical health unit okay. or any medical college. Okay. Uh, you know, talking about Odisha taking giant leaps, we have to talk about uh, OCAC Aditi. How has this system, Aditi, been instrumental in streamlining the budgeting, the accounting and financial reporting processes of the government? If you ask me if we need to spend somewhere as a government, I think we need to spend in convergence. See, we don't make policies every day. We implement policies. We either delete policies or we implement policies. So how better can we use our new generative AI in working on our existing schemes and po uh, policies and of course, implementing and being a brownfield state coming forward. The next panel theme, Unbound Odisha, the tourism resurrection through light on the success of the tourism sector in Odisha and how to make the sector meet global standards in future. On that note, let me also get you in, Mr. Banda. Uh, what has your experience been working in Bhubaneswar and in Odisha and um, uh, how is that um, that gentry of tourists uh, now looking at Odisha? The ecotourism which has come in, that uh, all the, uh, the eco resorts which have come in, 480 kilometers of coastline. There's so much can happen at that place. It's not only Puri, but there are a lot of other areas where it, uh, it can be developed. I hear that there are a lot of shacks, uh, kind of a tourism, the Goa kind of uh, tourism that. They're, you know, even Bali, if you look at it, they have uh, beautiful beach clubs. So if there is a potential to do that as well, that's what the younger generation is looking at it. Mr. Monty, may, uh, let me get you in on the rural tourism bit as well. What can you tell us about rural tourism and how is it developing uh, uh, in Orissa? I have a personal experience and undergone this by building a project in a rural area at Chilka Lake in the year 1995, when I went to, when I was there with my family for a picnic, I found the place so beautiful. I thought I should do something here. When I purchased this nine acres, I had to take 200 families to the sub-register's office to register this land. 
And when I started, these were the same people who objected, Are bhai, why you want to do something in our village? Later on, same people become daily laborers constructing the resort. They earned a living. Mr. Rath, may I start with you? What do you think has helped push the industry after COVID? Because there has been a reasonable amount of uh, development uh, that we see. So Post-COVID, there was a change in the scenario as well as the tastes of people as the youth travelers, they wanted to go to places where uh, they wanted solitude and they wanted to go on long drives. So as you know, Odisha has one of the best road networks in the country. We, our law and order situation is really good. Uh, we have very low crime rate and this was one of the factors which boosted the Odisha by road campaign and we curated six to seven such uh, road campaigns and uh, this actually helped us to have new products and people started uh, visiting these less, um, less explored destinations and more of exotic locations. Mr. Mahapatra, I wanted to speak to you about the hotels um, and uh, particularly also your experience about you have interacted with a lot of people who are coming to your hotels. They are coming for work, they are coming for leisure. What has changed in the last few years? You know, 30 years back when I, uh, we used to be in the front of us, we used to talk to the people. They either they come for the spiritual tourism or they come for the some carpet works or like, you know, to going to the, uh, what do you call, uh, Kandamal, Koraput, for the tribal tourism. Now, when you're meeting people, you can understand there's a spiritual tourism, the sports tourism, there's a, a, what you call, niche tourism. There's a, so many, you know, people are now started floating it and they are started like, you know, scouting what kind of these things are possible. Mr. Zarangi, in the last four or five years, how has the storytelling changed and what are the new aspects that are being highlighted by the tour operators? Uh? I can tell you in the last four or five years, which uh, we always talked about, you know, connectivity. Now, Bhubaneswar is so well connected to, uh, I mean, Dubai, then Bangkok, then Singapore. So I have to appreciate. And Orissa is emerging as a destination. I think in the marketing front, you talk about the ecotourism, you know, like the forest department government of Orissa is doing a commendable job. After the insightful discussions, it was time for a quick fireside chat that focused on how the government of Odisha is all set to bring inclusive growth through industrialization and connectivity. To improve rural road connectivity in the state, the Odisha cabinet has approved projects worth almost 5,000 crores under four different components of Mukhya Mantri Sadak Yojana. Sanjay, you know, let me start with you, if you could elaborate on these details and the kind of work that has been done so far. Rural connectivity, particularly in terms of road, is probably the backbone not only of tourism, rural tourism and ecotourism, but also for industries, also for agriculture, which is going to be the next session. Now, talking about uh, rural infrastructure, we also need to understand that the year 99 was a, a watershed year for uh, Odisha because of the super cyclone. Yeah. And most of the infrastructure, including the road infrastructure and connectivity, was completely destroyed. And talking about if we compare 2000 with 2020, 2022, in 20 years, things have completely transformed. While our budget in uh, rural development de department was around 300 crores at that point in time, hmm. today it is 7,500 crores. Okay. The uh, roads network which we had in the rural areas at that point in time, which was around 25,000 kilometers, I'm not talking about quality, I'm talking about the length of the roads which was about 25,000 uh, kilometers. In the book of accounts of rural uh, development department, Today, is mo it is more than one lakh kilometer. 
Uh, Heyman, let me now come to you, uh, talk to you. Let's talk about the industrial infrastructure, which is obviously a key growth aspect for, uh, you know, the growth in the sector. Uh, take me through the primary infrastructure projects. Our government has been laying great emphasis on industrial infrastructure development. Just to give you some numbers today, we have a land, because in industrial infrastructure starts with land. We have a land bank of more than 1,25,000 acres in every district of the state. Every district of the state now has a good MSME park where small, small plot sizes, one acres, five acres, 10 acres could be given with minimum facilities of water, power and connectivity and waste disposal to industries. Now to develop this infrastructure in a more planned and meaningful manner, what we have done, we have considered the state in terms of three corridors. So on the east coast, we have a corridor starts from Baleshwar and goes up to Raigada and up to Malkangiri. This is called East Coast Economic Corridor. This is port-led development. Then you look, at, you look at Western Orissa. Along the Biju Expressway, we have set up nine industrial heavy nodes. Each node will have today more than 500 acres of land, well-developed industrial land, good industrial plots for food processing industries, labor-intensive industries, metal downstream industries. So each theme, each park will have a theme. Power Pack panel title Odisha's Agri Space Green Shoots of Prosperity highlighted how the state's agri space is evolving, its various initiatives, and the need to understand the opportunities for its growth and investment. Uh, Mr. Padi, if I may start with you, let's start by actually looking at some of the recent initiatives and looking at what the achievements have been. Uh, Post-COVID also, there has been a lot of work that has been done. So if you could highlight some of those things for us. If I may quote uh, the figures, they, uh, from uh, the level of uh, now the food grains production of our state is as high as 13.07 million tons. And it has already grown 2.5 times. In the vegetable uh, production, uh, the growth is about three times and in many other sectors as well. And uh, I would just like to uh, inform the audience as well that this has happened because of primarily the pro-farmer policy of our state government under the leadership of our Honorable Chief Minister. We have a very progressive uh, agriculture policy, Samrudhi, it's called Samrudhi, uh, with an aim uh, to boost uh, the farmer's income. Uh, enhancing the farmer's income is our top focus and uh, to improve uh, the market linkages. In uh, 2016, uh, Odisha was perhaps one of the few states which uh, started an, an agri cabinet. So in the cabinet, uh, we have a, a subset set which discusses about uh, the agriculture uh, uh, as a whole. Uh, and also we have a separate agri budget. Do you know, I mean, how many of you would believe that our agriculture sector budget this year alone is 24,829 crores? So, I mean, those of you who have perceptions differently about our state, uh, please uh, change that from now on. Mr. Balakrishnan, get you in on uh, the new kid on the block, which is Millet. And uh, what is happening uh, uh, with the Millet program? Because I know Mission Millet was something that was started under your tenure and under your guidance. What is 2023 is a, uh, right now internationally celebrated as what? International Year of Millet. And we are very proud to say the seed for this was sown in Orissa. 1718, we launched something called Orissa Millet Mission. And then Government of India officials visited us. And then Government of India uh, celebrated and they appreciated Niti Ayok. And then 2018, I think, if I rightly remember, the National Year of Millet was celebrated in India. And 2023 is the International Year of Millet. Looking back, that somewhere 1718, Orissa does something. Today, it's internationally commemorated. The millet is the crop of our roots. Millet is the crop of our origins. That is precisely the story. It is not That's about economics alone. It's about culture. It's a body language. It's about attitude. It's about how your state would like to articulate. Let me get you in, Mr. Dash, and uh, shift our focus to um, uh, fisheries and also uh, some of the work that MPEDA has been doing. Could you highlight some of the initiatives uh, that have 
helped overcome challenges of recent times. Despite the fact that in the last seven, 17 years, from 500 crores of exports, we are almost 5,000 crores of exports. We have a tiny country called Ecuador, which half the coastline of Orissa, which is almost producing more, uh, the largest shrimp producer in the world. But as we look forward, Orissa government being one of the most proactive governments, I would say, and I've had the pleasure of working with them, we should look at proteins and blue proteins, proteins that you make, you know, like tilapia farming. I think that is something that Orissa government we, uh, really needs a, you know, clap for. Ms. Panigrahi, let's talk about the emerging sector of uh, agri-tech and the startup ecosystem. So uh, the agriculture, nowadays uh, many farmers that are working, uh, uh, there are certain challenges. So to overcome these challenges, the startup basically working in the pre-harvest by using certain technologies. For example, uh, the, the, is, uh, they are using the, uh, uh, basically uh, they have developed the platform which is kind of uh, uh, collaborating with the different input companies directly so farmer can get the input at a uh, uh, kind of very subsidized price. Another key panel, Invest Odisha, the gateway to Eastern India, emphasized on the various aspects to further develop an industrial strategy to help Odisha continue as a formidable destination for investments. Arvind, you know, let me start with you. I want to talk to you about the many initiatives like the government of Odisha that that has taken is like single window for investor facilitation and tracking, go swift. It is a single window portal created and enabled a hassle-free business climate for investors. If you can elaborate on that, Arvind, uh, you know, how's that working? We actually take care of the distribution sector hmm. and uh, we uh, basically create infrastructure to enable industry to grow. So all the government policies are made by them. And we make sure that we provide power to them as per requirement. There are certain definitions from the regulator. Huh. And uh, we improve our IT systems to ensure that people are able to apply and not have there too much of human intervention in giving them the power supply. So that's how we uh, support the clearance systems of the government. You know, Hemant, you earlier in the panel threw some light on this and touched upon this topic. But what I want to know from you is, how is the Industrial Promotion and Investment Corporation of Orisa looking to further reduce the turnaround time uh, for applications? And how are you pushing for faster, uh, you know, uh, grounding of projects? The work of uh, IPCOL, which is our investment promotion agency and also facilitation agency, starts uh, right from uh, information gathering, and across the life cycle of the project from concept to commissioning, Epicol provides handholding support through an online system called GoSwift. So the GoSwift is a uh, technical online platform where services related to in principle approval, selection of land, uh, major clearances like water, power, factories, all these services are provided in one online platform through one single application. What we have tried to do is fix timelines for each of these steps involved, eliminate physical submission of documents so that everything is online, provide a payment gateway for all payments which are related to government services, and then monitor on a technical platform uh, whether the timelines are being met and whether all the applications are being uh, cleared on time. One very important measure which we have taken recently is to set up at the district level, at the grassroots level, district investment promotion agencies. These are called DIPAs. Hmm. They work very closely with the district collector and the district industry centers, provide handholding support, site selection, in grievance redressal in case applications are stuck anywhere uh, or any additional uh, documentation is required. These uh, uh, DIPAs provide support at the grassroots level, at the field level, and we have observed that they are working very well and because of this online platform and the handholding support which is provided both by IPCOL and by DPR, uh, the turnaround time has is is improving, it is coming so, down. So let me bring in Ranan here, tell me what initiatives uh, have you kind of been able to bring in and what initiatives have been taken to broaden the industrial development in the state? Hmm. I think the resource seeking is very, very natural for Orissa because it is a resource rich state. but. What has happened is that the efficiency has been brought in, in governance, in the way ease of doing business is there at the state. 
and of course market is something which is going to come up because orissa's per capita income is going to more than double in over the next 5 to 6 years and when that level of per capita income reaches the kind of demand that gets generated will also create a local market after the thought provoking discussion odisha sparks conclave 2023 culminated with a series of special addresses sharing the remarkable insights on the efforts undertaken by the government of odisha to transform the healthcare space so to provide healthcare in government health system government is taking many steps recently also you must have heard 5000 posts of doctors have been created in the last year around 4000 doctors have been uh, recruited that means government is taking many steps to strengthen the common health system to provide universal health care initially when there was a plan of bsqi the rates and everything everybody was little bit hesitant how it will be but finally all the team members apollo ameri care and other hospitals and the team from the government of odisha they we sit together and the rates are finalized and i can say the rates which is offered by bsqi is the best rate and it's it is a bright example for other states to follow this one Electronic and IT Department OCAC presents Odisha Sparks Conclave in association with CNBC TV18, co-presented by OMC.